Sup, nerd. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Subcast here with me, Adam Toa, also known as Tuna, joined once again by our resident FPS aficionado, as he's known as, <laughs> is Control Quack, also known as. Hey, I'm Quack. That's there what's you up. Go. Hey, <laughs> every got that's why I look forward to. to. The spot. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we want to wish everybody who is celebrating a uh, Chinese Year or Lunar Year a very happy Lunar New Year and a happy Tiger Year ahead. It's a Tiger, tiger right? Year. Tiger yeah. Year. Quack. Well, well, what what's your zodiac? I'm a, I'm a rat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My words last year actually. Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay, you're, you're the play creature. <laughs> the play creature, <laughs> I guess so. It's okay. Wait, I'm a cock as well, so yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> when people okay. ask me, that's what I say. But yeah, so we're back again this week with a special, not what do you call it, a special, but like um, a, an animated series that I like, once again forced Quack to watch. And this one is Marvel and Hulu's hit monkey series it's a 10 part animated series based on this hit monkey character which most of you guys have never heard of before especially quite as well he's like is that based on a comic so yeah it, it is a comic book character and it's a 10 episode series first um first uh, appeared on hulu like hulu's platform which we don't freaking used here in singapore i guess uh, and it's finally available now on disney plus so you can actually just log into your Disney Plus account and watch all 10 episodes, binge it. It's about like 20 plus minutes each. Uh, okay, so that, that's what we're going to talk about here. <laughs> Quick, first uh, first impressions when I mentioned it to you and then uh, when you start watching. What what were your first impressions? It's it's another one of those, what is this show? Where did this come from? I, I'd never heard of Hitmonkey before. But I remember like just scrolling through Disney Plus, I saw that, uh, I, I guess, the title card and you see the the snow monkey. It looks pretty cool. But snow Marvel monkey. and like, wait, this is a thing. But yeah, I, I guess I just wasn't really hooked onto it at first um, until, you know, you told us to tell me to watch it and uh, went to check it out. It's it's pretty cool. I, I kind of like it. It's, I mean, it's not like my most favorite thing in the world. I'll, oh, yeah. I guess I'll we'll go into that a little bit further, but it's, it is a pretty nice show. It's animated. It's a lot more adult than I would have it's expected. very more adult. Marvel. <laughs> yeah. I guess it, it's a Marvel show. And I thought, you know, it's like, oh, oh cool. It's a hitman, but monkey. Maybe they'll have like nice little, I don't know assassinations, but no, they they went all out with the the animation and everything. It's very Western, um, not very like anime, but they're trying to do that Japanese themed thing. I don't know if that was like from the comics, but it's pretty cool. It's just a lot more the adult than I thought it would be. Yeah, I think our our main uh, you know head nerd Vic was also surprised. It was actually our games editor Carlo. Who, really? who sent us the the link in the uh, the group chat saying like, "Hey guys, this is out on Disney Plus." I was like, "Oh," because I was aware that it was out on Hulu. I saw the trailer like last year, and I was like, "Oh, this this looks interesting." Because Hulu has been doing these things. The first one was Modoc. I'm not sure if you watch it. It's still like the uh, no, you know, it. it, it's sort of like a stop motion thing where Patton Oswalt playing Modoc in a very oh, yeah. weird, <laughs> funny way. He's actually a dad, <laughs> a suburban dad, but he's also running this evil empire. And Modoc's it's, one of the weirdest characters. <laughs> it's weird. Yes, design. but they, they made the series like way, <laughs> way, way more weird. <laughs> it was fun. I mean, I, I enjoyed the first couple of episodes and I can't remember whether I finished it because it was slowly being released on Disney Plus. Uh, it, was, it wasn't like Hitmonkey where all... 10 episodes were once. available yeah. yeah so i think they were releasing like once a week or uh two episodes every week and i kind of lost track i didn't finish it but yeah so hulu's been doing these uh marvel series which are more adult oriented and hit monkey was that so when carlo mentioned that i was like oh wow okay because uh, i i've been watching a lot as well these days we're like you know trying to finish ted lasso uh also we have like book of boba fett happening peacemaker mm -hmm. 
So I said, I'll, I'll, I'll have a look. It's like 20 plus minutes, right? So I yeah. sat down one evening and I kind of binged it <laughs> the whole the whole series. The whole thing in one day. Oh my I, God. I, I, I'll crazy. admit it's it's not like that super special one, but I think I was just like bored and it was like kind of like, you know, you could just play it and just mm. enjoy it. Uh, a little bit of background on Hitmonkey. The only reason I know, it, it is quite a deep cut and it also like a very recent, kind of a recent character. Because Hitmonkey was uh, created by Daniel Way in 2010. Uh, oh. He's a comic books writer. He was actually writing Deadpool, uh, the, the series from 2008, his run of Deadpool. Okay. Which I was buying the single issues as well. So I, I kind of like his stuff. And he also did clicks Venom. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And oh. then he also did Venom, I believe. But the, the reason I actually... Got to know Hitmonkey initially was he was part of the Marvel Legends like built a figure character. So you know Marvel Legends have these like you know you have the toys and then you have a build a figure parts. And for this particular wave, they call it the Hitmonkey wave. And I was like, wait, what? What's a Hitmonkey? <laughs> and this was in 2013, so I was like actually three years late after uh, when I found out about Hitmonkey. And went back. Turned out uh, Daniel Wade did it like a. Uh, uh, one shot of Hitmonkey, uh, uh, an origin kind of story, kind of a one shot, one uh, issue comic book. And then afterwards, because he was still doing his uh, Deadpool run, he actually introduced Hitmonkey into the Deadpool like series for it's like a three issue arc. It was pretty okay. funny because it's uh, it was actually about uh, Deadpool in New York and running into Spider Man. And Spider-Man and Deadpool, they were like, they found out like, oh, look, they're like, you know, killings happening. But the guys who are being killed are these gangsters. And Deadpool's like, oh, you're not going to believe. I know this guy. <laughs> Spider-Man's <laughs> like, who's this? You're not going to believe it. Who is it? It's Hitmonkey. <laughs> A monkey <laughs> hitman. And then the two of them try to like, you know, take on Hitmonkey. It was pretty cool. But Hitmonkey's character in that uh, three issue arc was kind of different compared to like his origin, like one shot. And mm. because he was so, uh, it was quite popular. I wouldn't say like super popular, but quite popular with the readers that they did a three issue mini series on uh, Hitmonkey. Mm. So basically this Hulu series or Hulu Disney Plus series, animated series is actually based on that three issue, uh, the, the standalone one shot and then the three issue uh Hit monkey series so it's actually mm. quite similar i went back to read it after finishing the the, the series there's a lot of similarities which i can i can't i guess this is the time where we tell you guys that yeah some spoilers are gonna come but <laughs> if you haven't watched it go watch it come back and listen to this <laughs> um, that's the plan that is the plan right um <laughs> it's basically <laughs> they they change a few things right um let's start off with like the origins uh, how did you find it and maybe you can tell tell the readers like what happened as well how hitmonkey came to be um the origins i mean the very first was it the very first scene you see the like a flash of the monkey and like all right you know that's the main character it's, a, it's the title yeah. of the show but they focus a lot more on uh, Jason Sudeikis's character, Bryce, oh <laughs> Hitman, Bryce. <laughs> and that's where it kind of clicked, right? Because you, you were mentioning <laughs> the creator of this uh, this character um, used to write for Deadpool. Uh, <laughs> a lot of those sarcastic remarks, which is it's just that's his style. That's Jason Sudeikis. You know? yeah. So uh, the character Bryce is actually new. He was created for oh. the series. So in the comics, uh, it was an unknown assassin, like unnamed unknown assassin. Just and, came out of nowhere. Uh, I'm. <laughs> this could be like stereotyping, but the way they drew him, because it was actually, uh, the whole story was set in Japan, right? In the comics, the assassin looks like a Japanese dude, like a, like a you know, gangster, not Yakuza, but like a Japanese guy, assassin. And then he was actually speaking Japanese. It was the same kind of like, you know, the uh, initial like story beats as well, where he was supposed to take out uh, a politician and then he got, uh, you know, uh, double crossed and ended up uh, running away, being saved by the monkeys. 
everything else that happened, it's the same. But it's just that like, it's not an American hit band in Japan. But I think it's a, it's a cool, uh, it's a good switch, I feel. Because in the comics, yeah, the assassins, they're more like that kind of an annoying not 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 that funny, but it's just more like a mentor. So like, yeah, we're gonna we have yeah, to do yeah. this, blah 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 blah. But Jason Sudeikis and like I mentioned earlier, right? I was trying to finish Ted Lasso. I finished both seasons now. I love it. Like, and, and he's like, <laughs> for me, when he was speaking, he still had that twang of the the Ted Lasso twang. So I was like, oh my god, this is actually good. And you, <laughs> and you're you're correct. Like, good observation where you notice that. Uh, Bryce, the character was more like Deadpool because he was throwing like pop culture references and like yeah. that kind of a sarcastic, funny guy. That was cool, and that 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 what I noticed is all. I was like, oh, okay, this is where this is what they're they're doing, and it was actually um, overall right. I think it worked better because the monkey obviously is not. There, there are no lies. I'm, there's actually a voice actor who does the monkey voices, but he's not yes. speaking. <laughs> he's, I was like, oh, he's credited. I was like, oh my God, that's cool. It's like that Groot job, you know, like Vin Diesel. Just oh, yeah. like, I am Groot. Groot. Right, <laughs> but they Groot. do it with emotion. And like, it's it's really pretty cool. <laughs> it's really um, cool. I have no idea how to pronounce his last name. Fred Tata. Tata Scuri. I don't know. <laughs> Is it? It's, it's Italian, I think. Italian. Not sure, but um, I know him from his voiceover work in, in some some games. Uh, oh. Most notably, Soldier Seventy Six from Overwatch, Ooh, and he just has him. he's like this, yeah, big guy, <laughs> really like low gravelly voice, pretty cool. I did not, I didn't realize that he was the monkey. I thought he was like one of the other like Japanese yakuza gangster bosses or something, but no, he's the monkey, and he's he's just doing all those. The monkey has a very almost medium to high pitched kind of like those uh, growls and stuff. That kind of yeah, and even sometimes like uh, I don't know, Bryce will like say some sarcastic thing, and the monkey goes like, "I don't know," but in the monkey growl, and like it actually sounds like it. Like wow, that's that's incredible. That's not that's not easy to pull off. Yeah, he's he's like an older dude as well. He's like, well, he's not that old. He's like fifty four, but yeah, he's a voice actor. I'm not that familiar with his work. Oh, I'm, I'm like quite close to fifty four in a way. <laughs> there, there are like uh, okay, notable voices apart from Jason Sudeikis is actually George George Takai as like you know yes. Shinji Yoko. I'm at the main. Oh my, <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, wow. Olivia and also, Munn. All the, yeah, Olivia Munn. And I'm not actually that familiar with Ali Makai, Maki. Maki? Maki? I think it has to be Maki. Maki? Is that Makai? Maki. It's Japanese. It should be Maki. (laughs) She's actually Japanese. Is she Japanese? No, she's American. She's American. She was born in Japanese American? Yes. It's M A K I. You can't tell me that's (laughs) Makai. Someone's. Carl Kanai. Have you heard of that brand called Carl Kanai? No, what is that? <laughs> it's it's like remember Fubu and all that from like you know nineties, those like streetwear like uh, hip hop nope. culture stuff. You're you're talking to someone who's born. <laughs> I know around around the, around the time these clothes were like coming out. Yeah, I have no idea what those are, man. But, nope. Okay, so um, like I mentioned, the the series followed quite closely to that three story arc, but uh, there are a few. Uh, differences of course you've seen it you saw some of the uh, marvel and other deep cuts showing up uh, not sure if you're you're familiar with that sumo guy fat cobra no so I, that's a marvel character yeah Are you serious? it is what he's he's cool he i okay. first encountered this character when i was reading the uh the mortal iron fist by matt fraction uh, his run on the, uh, the Mortal Iron Fist was the one that got me into Iron Fist. I was like, oh, wow, this is pretty cool. And Fat Cobra is one of the characters in there. So I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. And then when they, they brought in, like, you know, the assassin, I was like, oh, who's that? Oh, oh my God, they're doing Lady Bullseye. So Lady Bullseye is also another, like, kind of newish character because she was, uh, she first appeared in 2008 around there because I, I still have like the single single issues uh, <laughs> so she's, she's kind of like new newish right so in the comics 
uh, it wasn't it wasn't Lady Bullseye. It was Bullseye. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, wait, so it's so a, it was it a was, dude? Yeah, I mean, Bullseye the character, right? So. Okay. Okay, so you're not familiar with Bullseye? No, no. Oh, Who's no. Bullseye? Dude, Bullseye is like one of the... That's embarrassing. Like, <laughs> no worries. He's, he's, he was actually in the, the horrible Ben Affleck Daredevil movie. With, like, oh. Colin Farrell was Bullseye with that freaking target on his skin. I saw it, but wow. I just Googled it. That looks weird. <laughs> yeah, but Bullseye okay, is like cool the... Care. You know, he's been around for the longest assassin. time. like the deadliest assassin. He never misses right. kind of thing. So uh, that, that's what they change in, in, this, in the series. They, they switch it to like uh, Lady the Bullseye. Lady. Not only that, they also, again, spoilers, right? So they kind of like gave a, a new, gave us a new Lady, uh, lady Bullseye because in the comics, mm. it, it, it was actually, uh, well, what's her name again? Uh, Maki Matsumoto was Lady Bullseye, right? Okay. But then... In the series, it was Maki, but then like she, she died. Spoilers. Died. <laughs> and, then, um, and then Olivia Mons, like you know, character Akiko took over, and at the end, the, the end scene, I was like, okay, that's yeah. that's pretty interesting. But um, okay, let's talk about what what worked for you and what did not. Um, what well, works for me? I mean, the voice acting is pretty cool. I, you gotta love <laughs> Jason Sudeikis. Sudeikis, like just, right? <laughs> the, the whole cast. It's 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 just fun to listen to that. Um, animation is pretty cool as well. There, there's a bit of that whole comic book vibe uh, at some points, especially when the animals <laughs> start talking to each other. Um, when the monkeys speak to each other, they have those little those speech bubbles that pop up. Bu- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And that's like, oh, wow, this really looks like a frame from like a comic book or something. And like, <laughs> you can appreciate the art and, and everything that goes into it. Um, yeah, stuff like that. The, the origin story sometimes with the, you know, um, the code, <laughs> the code, the code, <laughs> the code, the code, the code, the code. Um, revenge that kind of thing like yeah it gets a little bit emotional it's, it's pretty fun um but i guess I, I don't know just something about the entire plot like there's something about it that doesn't really hook me into it like you know if you watch most shows like uh when i was binging loki last week or hawkeye it, those are some shows that like for whatever reason, and I'm not sure, but um, after like first few episodes, it's just I want to keep watching to find out more. With Hit Monkey, it's like okay, so this happened. I can kind of stop there because I'm not sure like where this is going until like you know there's some kind of a quest going on, and you just kind of want to go along with the journey. But it wasn't that strong for some reason and and like you got all these different characters and like they don't explain it they just you're just it's best to just kind of go along with the ride and enjoy it like where why is there this monkey who's who's somehow good at at fighting and killing i guess and then where did this this sumo come from why does he shoot what lightning from his legs like where did that come from (laughs) i was a a little bit confused but like wow it's pretty cool (laughs) it's actually an interesting angle where you know for somebody who like like you who who's not that familiar with some of the deep cuts and the characters uh i mean i i do agree that it does get kind of draggy ish Maybe if they cut it down to like eight episodes, that would have worked. But overall, because I was trying to compare it to the uh, the original comic run as well, right? Uh, like I mentioned, it was actually an unknown, unnamed, like assassin guy. And we don't get to find out more about his backstory. For Bryce, though, I like that episode where we start seeing like, oh, why he is how he is. Oh, you know, yeah. when he showed up, like uh, when they showed what happened when he was like younger with his family and all that. So it, it they, they try to go a little bit deeper uh, for that. And I'm like, okay, even for monkey as well. Right. It's, it's a funny violent over the top show, but they do manage to uh, bring in these like kind of intimate 
at kind of like, you know, emotional moments where I'm like, oh, okay. And what I really like about the overall thing is like the animation, it's super violent. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like, you know, Sudeikis is voice acting, very quippy and funny. It was super it, violent. It, <laughs> it felt like a joy to watch. And we don't get to see uh, this kind of adult oriented you know, uh, shows hmm. from Marvel, especially Marvel and DC, because I uh, know not DC, sorry, Marvel and uh, Disney, because they are quite protective. And, yeah. like, you know, they want it to be, be for PG everybody. 13. Yeah, yeah, like uh, the whole family. So when we get these rare kind of like Marvel characters in these hmm. kind of like situations and kind of like, you know, wow. stories, I appreciate yes. it. Um, Deadpool, the, the, the movies were fun because of that as well and hopefully uh, we can see more of this like i, I it's yeah. i mean animation is like the uh, uh the safer way for them to go for these kind of stories because you know you know you don't have live action characters you don't see like you know chris Hansen i like it stupid stuff or getting <laughs> i mean what if kind of messed with it a little bit i guess yes. the zombies is setting a little bit of that it's always nice when um animated shows aren't treated as like cartoons for for kids for, for, kids, for children right? <laughs> it's animation is just a, another medium and you can like mess around with it like that's the fun thing about animation it's not live action there's so many things that you can do that you can't really do in real life unless <laughs> i don't know cg maybe i mean that that kind of is anime 3d animation yeah in its own way but that's something that you would really enjoy like i enjoy logan a lot um oh, deadpool yeah. like you mentioned like those are good punisher <laughs> um, oh my god punisher. all those kinds of things and that's kind of something that you get to see in hit monkey so that was really nice but i still think the animation is it's not bad it's good but it's not the same as like anime it's still very western there are some scenes yes, you can it tell is. I mean, they don't have to, like, you know, put in a lot of flair. It doesn't really do all that much for the story, I guess. But it could have been fun to to look at or to watch. Um, sometimes when, I don't know, like, like uh, was it the rooster? Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the rooster. rooster. I mean, you, you want to, it's, it's hit monkey. You want to see the monkey, like, finish off his opponents in style. And, like, you know, sometimes <laughs> he's got a katana. Sometimes with his gun i mean there are some pretty gruesome deaths and some, see, okay like they that old lady gruesome. at like you know the factory <laughs> that, like, what was, was going oh my god she was like laughing it. the whole time like what the that was that was <laughs> yeah. like a moral comic fatality right oh yes yes quite like, a kung lao with the hat yeah kung <laughs> yeah. lao with the hat thing so all that kind of it's stuff it's crazy but, <laughs> it's like if you compare because right, I'm, I'm not a full-blown weeb or anything i'm not a weeaboo but i i mess with a little bit of anime you know like attack a titan uh, <laughs> Did your Slayer. Toes do that just a little bit yeah, <laughs> yeah but you could see like for those um like japanese anime the fight scenes sometimes they get really crazy i have no idea how they do it but mm. it gets pretty dynamic with the camera angles and the, the way it follows all the action i mean just look at like freaking uh, Levi from Attack of Titan, if, if anyone knows what I'm talking about. Um, Hit Monkey doesn't really do that all that much. Um, they do do pretty gruesome stuff. I'm saying, I'm saying like maybe they could do a little bit more. There, like some scenes where like he's supposed to finish off someone, they just cut to the outside and then they show him <laughs> walking out like he's all bloody. Like I finish him off, all right, I'm good. There's, you don't really get to see. It depends. I mean, again, it doesn't really serve the story that much i guess so they don't have to do it mm. but it might be fun to look at i don't know i'm actually trying to look up uh which company did the animation um, <laughs> that's a good question but it has its own style and i think that's that's something that was pretty interesting as well um it's like and um, you know what marvel television but that's it studios i think it is by marvel itself that's just like interesting oh. spec gordon incorporated hmm. floyd marvel television yeah 
But I, I get what you mean. The animation, though, it's like you know, I think it's more of like anime inspired because it's, especially since it's like trying to set in Japan Ooh. as well, right? So, it the the action scenes, I feel like it's more like a Tarantino movie where yes, Tarantino's, that's what I was about to say. Right? You know what this reminds me of? Which one? It's like uh, Kill Bill, Kill Bill, and John right? Wick. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, John Wick sure. just because of all the assassin stuff. <laughs> the Tarantino is actually inspired by the Japanese cinema, but it's like mm. it's its own take. And this is sort of like a take on Tarantino stuff, which is still based on the Japanese cinema. So it's like you know a different kind of a uh, inspiration. Yeah. Um, but overall, I still feel that it was different enough for a Marvel-based you know series. Mm. And a Western one at that as well. I mean, you could talk about Afro Ninja, which was like Western based, by right? Western animation, but it's <laughs> it is an anime. You have no idea what I'm talking about. Nope, <laughs> it sounds familiar, Dude. but nope. <laughs> oh my god, Afro Ninja! Please, so those who are listening, if you guys haven't Google. watched it, it's a series. It's an African American like. Afro Samurai, sorry. What was I saying ninja? Afro Samurai. Afro, Afro Ninjas. Sa- Afro Ninja is the other musician. What? Oh, God. I need more coffee. Okay, Afro Samurai. Afro Samurai. samurai. It's Sam Jackson being what? that samurai. I. It, it's amazing. It's super bloody violent. It's a. Uh, it's a, an awesome revenge samurai tale. They did like uh, two seasons, I believe. Uh, they released a game as well on Xbox 360 and PS3, which I finished, and I was a, that was such a fun game to play as well. Um, yeah. So yeah, what, what was I saying? I got I got distracted by Afro Ninja. <laughs> Afro Samurai. <laughs> I don't know. No, I was saying Afro Ninja. For some oh, okay. reason. What the, why Afro Ninja? Ninjas and samurais. <laughs> They're not Same. interchangeable, damn it. They're not, they're not, but it's a theme. <laughs> it is a theme. Uh, so for me, this, it does stand out like Modoc as well, right? I'm, it might not be the best thing ever, or like a big game changer, but Modoc for, you know, Marvel, a Marvel property that's stop motion and kind of like funny, like adult comedy kind of a thing. And this one is sort of like an action comedy, adult oriented action comedy animation based on a Marvel license. So I think it's, mm. I, I would love to see more of this. And I hope that they get enough, you know, support from you know, the, the viewers, the audience, so that, you know, the, you know, the big suits are always looking at numbers. So, yeah. so if there's <laughs> enough, like, you know, support. Hopefully we can see more. I think they, they're talking about like uh, uh, doing other shows for Dazzler and all that as well. But hopefully it'll be more adult oriented ones. Because that's mm. that's what I feel like missing for, for Marvel. But DC got their own stuff. Like DC's always been more like darker, more yep. violent stuff. And then you have Harley Quinn, the animated series, which has been freaking amazing. Um, I'm still waiting for a season three. I'm not sure if it's out yet. But yeah, this is... If this is the the kind of direction that Marvel's going, hey, part to them, and I would love to watch more of this. Um, so yeah, let's let's talk about scores, man. What what do you think? I never really noticed the score all that much. Oh no, I'm talking about like the score. <laughs> oh, for, score for, for score the of the show. Itself. Okay, yeah, cool. I'm gonna have to give it like a a solid. Six out of ten, or three six. out of five. If you want to six out of ten, or three out of five. Okay. The divisions. Yeah, it's it's like it's a solid show. You can watch to enjoy it, but it's not really something that's like at the top of my list. You know, a must watch kind of thing. Yeah, I'll I'll watch to enjoy it. Um, if a season two does come out, like I might check it out. But it's not something that I'm going to be like, oh, my God, when is season two? I need to see this right now. Right. It, I, I don't really feel that way. Not yet, anyway. Fair enough. Fair enough. I would actually score it about like 7 or 7.5 if I'm in a better mood. Uh, mainly because of the, the previous reason that I was talking about where, you know, if Marvel continues to do more of these adult-oriented, like, you know, animation, like uh, animated it series... Should. That would be great because um, this is what I want to see. And um, 
season two, it it sounds interesting because he is headed to like the states, and right? if they can bring in like you know like in the comics, Deadpool, Deadpool Spider. I mean, they brought in Silver oh. Samurai. <laughs> that was funny though. It's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there are that some quips here and there. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I like to see see more of the universe expand, and it's only like what ten episodes, twenty minutes each. Hmm. It's easy to digest, and like, if, like you mentioned, it's not at the top of your list, but like you know, it should be part of your top ten. I would say, if anything, I think it's it's like a step forward. It's it's proof that Marvel can do these. Um, adult-ish kind of shows whether yeah. animated or not like there there is an audience for it i think it has to be otherwise this wouldn't have been a thing um i mean logan is freaking cool I, I still love that movie deadpool you know everyone kind of like enjoyed that a lot it's they are big enough that they can do so like for certain titles that need to to, to have this adults like i don't know gory violence or, or jokes that are maybe not so kid friendly it it has to be that because you don't want to watch like another x-men or like you don't want to watch wolverine and like just claw at someone like but then you see that off screen yeah you <laughs> don't want to see that it's so <laughs> it's so disappointing it has to be certain titles certain ips are like hit monkey um, Wolverine, they need to be this, I don't know, violent, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> because if not, it's like, it's just, imagine if you watched Hitmonkey and all the kills were like, you know, for lack of a better term, nerfed. Like he nerfed. shoots someone and you just see the guy like drop off screen. Like every single kill is just <laughs> boring. You don't see any actual action. Like that's, that it loses its flair. It needs to be this violent. <laughs> I don't know. I just sound insane. <laughs> I sound no, like no, no. Angry. I totally agree with it. It's like very well put as well. The way you said it is like this is why I want people to to watch, you know, um, the series yeah. so that uh, there's enough support and like viewership so that Marvel would be like, yeah, we're gonna do more of these, and then we get to you know enjoy more of us. The, this kind of stuff <laughs> more more blood more blood and gore that's what we need right now in this world you know <laughs> oh gosh yeah <laughs> limp terry i mean there, there was a definitely losing our minds coming up to the <laughs> second anniversary of like you know covid uh -oh. like, you know, <laughs> we're all slowly losing our minds it's just Whoops. give us more blood and gore more <laughs> Play, play Doom Eternal on PC. <laughs> no. Oh, jeez. Oh, but yeah, I think overall, it, it's still it's still a really good and fun show for, for you mm -hmm. guys to watch. It's like 10 episodes. Please do go and check it out. <laughs> and we're going to cut the podcast here today before you start talking more about blood and gore. And people start <laughs> calling in the cops. They're like, these two guys, uh -oh. please <laughs> you question them at least, you know, question them. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you once again for listening to our little podcast here on Subcast. I'm Adam Tuna Tom, and we got Control Quick. I am Quick. Thanks for joining once again. <laughs> we'll catch you guys next time. Bye. Bye. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you guys. Take care. <laughs> Sup, nerd.